Last week, I did a user experience review on the brand new Tamron 17-28mm f2.8, and I briefly did a comparison between this lens and the Sony G Master 16-35 f2.8. But in this video, we're going to show you an actual head-to-head -head comparison and offer more details as to which of these lens you should get. By the way, this helpful lens comparison is made possible by our friends over at Squarespace. Performance is key, so let's take a look at that first. Starting off with my famous video autofocus test at f2.8, the Tamron kept up extremely well with the G Master. In fact, the autofocus performance almost seems to be the same. The Tamron rack focuses extremely smoothly with no signs of stuttering or hesitation. On top of that, the autofocus is also very quiet as well. And usually, there are slight color differences whenever I compare lenses, but not these two. They look nearly identical, almost if they were shot on the same lens. In terms of photo autofocus, Tamron is quite snappy. However, when I compare it to the G Master as I'm walking towards the camera, the G Master seems to have a slight edge. It never severely lost focus for a split second like the Tamron did. However, the Tamron did reacquire the focus pretty quickly. But in terms of hit rate, it seems like G Master takes the cake. Manual focus control is decent on the Tamron, but I felt the G Master had better control as I rotate the ring. I get much better rack focus shots with the G Master compared to the Tamron. This is important to those who manual focus a lot, especially when using a focus controller on a gimbal. At f2.8, both lenses are looking sharp, especially at the center. I also had a chance to shoot a quick landscape comparison with the 61 megapixel beast, the Sony A7R Mark IV. When viewed in its entirety, both images look nearly identical. But upon a closer look, at f2.8, both are sharp at the center, but the G Master helped better details throughout the image. And at f10, the G Master helped better details on the edge. One of the big characteristics Tamron touts about their lenses is that they work in conjunction with Sony's in-camera adjustments. When all of these features are turned off, both lenses produce identical results. But when they're turned on, the vignetting disappears from the G Master, whereas the Tamron only lessens. Again, like I mentioned in my review, it's quite difficult to notice the vignetting on the Tamron anyway, especially in a real-life situation, and if you're shooting photos, it's super easy to correct. Getting into the bokeh balls, G Master always get crowned for the smoothest and purest of balls. But Tamron seems to have a ball within a ball? No further comment here. Just depends on how okay you would be about these balls. To me personally, doesn't bother me too much. Close focusing! Gotta give it to Tammy on this one. You can get super close to an object, whereas the G Meister, not so much. G Master has an autofocus manual focus toggle and a focus hold button that can be reprogrammed, while the Tamron does not. Not a huge deal breaker though, but nice to keep that in mind. The Tamron has the focus and zoom rings reversed, just a heads up in case you're used to it being the other way around. In terms of size and weight, obviously Tamron is much lighter, but it does have a more plasticier build. G Master definitely has a more robust build, and it should be for that price. G Master, I've definitely gotten it wet before, and it's fine. I haven't been able to test that with the Tamron though. Now, before we get into the practicality of either lenses in the real world, I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm sure you heard by now, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful and clean websites. Recently, Vivian and I launched our free filmmaking course and we created a landing page to house all five tutorials. Creating this page took us no more than 30 minutes to put together thanks to Squarespace user-friendly interface. Whether you need a website to build a portfolio or an e-commerce store, build it with Squarespace. Start your free trial today and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jason Vong to save 10% off your website or domain. So, what about the practicality of either of these lenses in the real world? For travel, in terms of versatility, G Master has the advantage if you're looking to just use one zoom lens. It covers the most range, 16 to 35, whereas the Tamron only gets up to 28 millimeter. To me, this lens by itself, it doesn't really feel full. I feel like I'm not really getting enough range out of it. You can, of course, use Super 35 mode and clear image zoom to squeeze out some extra distance out of this lens. 
However, if I can use two lenses, then it wouldn't really matter anyways, especially when I can pair it up with a 20 to 75 millimeter ultimate combination right here. For more information about Super 35 mode and clear image zoom, check out my video linked up here. For real estate shoots, typically ultra wide angle lenses are extremely useful for real estate shoots. While one millimeter won't make a whole lot of difference between these two lenses right here, some would say neither of these lenses are wide enough and would suggest something else like a Lawa 10 to 18 or Sony 12 to 24 instead. For landscape, same deal, one millimeter won't make a whole lot of difference, but having that zoom up to 35 millimeter can make a huge difference. For vlogging, either options are great, but the Tamron is definitely lighter and easier on the arms. If you plan on using either of these lenses on a gimbal, the G Master will require a beefier one, like the Zhiyun Crane 2, Crane 3, or even the DJI Ronin S, especially when you want to zoom with the lens without having to rebalance the setup. The Tamron, on the other hand, can be used on a lighter gimbal like the Zhiyun Weibo Lab or the DJI Ronin SC. Since the Tamron 17 28 has internal zooming, it won't affect the balance as much. Honestly, while the G Master is a lot more robust and versatile, when it comes to $900 versus $2,200, I think a lot of little things on a Tamron can be overlooked. A lot of enthusiasts and advanced hobbyists are really gonna enjoy Tamron's latest ultra wide angle lens. Now, I am aware of Sigma's new 14 to 24 mm f2.8, specifically designed for the Sony FE mount. I'm trying to get a review unit soon while I still have the Tamron loader. I definitely want to make that comparison for you guys. But until then, I'll have to see you guys in the next video. Peace.